Okay, very interesting. Managing the inner critic. Step eight on the management of emotional flashbacks. When CPTSD survivors come of age and launch from their traumatizing family, they are often unaware that their minds are dominated by an inner critic. I remember reading this bit because I was not unaware and I'm still not. I <laughs> In assisting others to manage flashbacks, the most common help I offer is to encourage them to challenge the alarmist and perfectionistic programming of the inner critic. This type of scenario arises frequently in my practice. A client in the midst of reporting an inconsequential mistake suddenly launches into a catastrophizing tale. He reports from his critic's nightmarish fantasy that his life is deteriorating into a cascading series of disasters. He is flashing back to the way he was continually overpunished in childhood. Side note, right? Sometimes reading out loud can make me tense because it can be emotional flashbacky. And if I stumble on my words or stutter or something, that can be more of a trigger. Well, I've just noticed something that really helped with that because we've been doing progressive muscle relaxation in our body to help us to be more embodied and map the frame of our body and have it be like a relaxed sensation instead of all the muscles tense. Well, I just... I just did it to my tongue while I was talking. I noticed that my tongue was actually really tense and that's kind of what's making it hard to do some of these words because I have to read and scan and translate just ahead of when I'm saying it to account for the dyslexia. It's hard to explain, but it's like, it's quite challenging. And longer words, it's harder to scan them at the right pace and say them and this tension is making my tongue tense and then that's making it more likely that it can't twist around the letters and I've just realised that by doing the same like progressive relaxation thing but with my tongue if I just try to physically focus on my tongue and relax it it um, moves around the words much more fluidly so yeah there's a there's a thing <laughs> where was I? A client in the midst of reporting an inconsequential mistake suddenly launches into a catastrophizing tale. He reports from his critic's nightmarish fantasy that his life is deteriorating into cascading into a series of disasters. Into a cascading series of disasters. He is flashing back to the way he was continually overpunished in childhood. One of my clients' drastic sizing, drasticizing sounded like this. My boss looked at me funny when I came back from my bathroom break this morning and I know he thinks I'm stupid and lazy and is going to fire me. I just know I won't be able to get another job. My girlfriend will think I'm a loser and leave me. I'll get sick from the stress and with no money to pay my medical insurance and rent, I'll soon be living out of a shopping cart. It's disturbing how many drasticizing inner critic rants end up with an image of homelessness. What a symbol of abandonment. We have the same sir, hard mood. This is all very relatable to me. This is like describing my reality page by page. <sighs> Recovering requires being able to recognize inner critic catastrophizing so that we can resist it with thought stopping and thought correction. In this case, I reminded my client of my many times I had caught his critic freaking out about every conceivable way his life could go down the tubes. I then encouraged him to refuse to indulge this process and to angrily say no to the critic every time it tried to scare or demean him. Finally, I reminded him of all the positive experiences he actually had with his boss, thought correction, and I also helped him enumerate his many successes at work, at school, and in life in general. The inner critic not only exacerbates flashbacks, but eventually grows into a psychic energy that triggers them. Is that psychic or physic? Psychic. Thank you. Reversing the damaging effects of the critic is the subject of the next two chapters. We get into advanced flashback management, which I think, I think I'm going to have a, a crack at. But at first I had something really... My brain's pulling together loads of strands, right? So, okay... There's this thing I read about this, I can't remember, I think it was an Australian Aboriginal tribe of people. Um, and when somebody committed a crime in their, like, I, I imagine there were levels, but when somebody did something bad and 
you know, not all consumingly evil, but something bad in their community, their response to this person acting that way was to go and bring the person into a circle of the community of the village and everyone would go around and tell a story of like this person to remind them of the good they can do and the good that's seen in them and their accomplishments and achievements. I've always remembered that and thought that seems like a much better way to correct the the behaviours that we use to act out that are socially inappropriate are always, I think, a lack of needs being met and trauma in play and defensive protectiveness. And that just seemed like a straight way to help help um, pick someone up from that at a core level. Also, I'm thinking, I've heard, I've read this in the steps several times and I'm starting to think that it would be cool to write down a little list of like achievements, accomplishments, things that we can think of in no particular order, but just to have some. And then I can pick that up and look through that when in a flashback and that might help if we can build the habit internally as well of we've started to say I'm capable because here's evidence in memories like look at the time I did X, look at the concert, look at the, you know, so we're kind of doing it. But like to have it as like a regimented thing that we always do could be kind of cool, could be very helpful. And then the third thing I wanted to say was. I think it's really important to differentiate ourselves from the inner critic because when I first read inner critic I obviously think of myself I think of myself as the persecutor part of me I would label myself as an inner critic I'm sure you would as well you <laughs> you you cheeky cunt yeah both of us a little <laughs> and um Ah, so, the thing is, there's a difference between the things that I have an identity in. Like, I can go fuck you and call something out in a brutal way, brutal, that other parts of me couldn't quite do. I can use assertiveness in a way that works for us. That's not the same thing. Those, there are traits that all get looped together for me. But that's not the same thing. I haven't lost my identity as somebody that can stand our ground like that if I stop persecuting us. And I have to remind myself of that a lot. And that um, this inner critic is actually the echo of the voice of abusers and people in our past that have fucked us over. It's not my voice. It's just an echo that I learned to mirror protectively. So to differentiate those things... I think in our identity from us while reading this is important for based off of purely how I felt reading this and the things I thought as I was reading it behind the part of me that was speaking <laughs> okay cool I'm feeling good about this